church. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I want to share a scripture with you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 reads as follows. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I simply want to encourage you this morning to be strong and courageous, not to be frightened or dismayed. As we venture uh, back into the world, let us not be dismayed or frightened. Let us be wise and cautious. But let's be strong and courageous, trusting that no matter where we go, God is with us. He's with you right now in your home. So as we venture into the Word together on this Memorial Day weekend, let's prepare our hearts to hear from God through His Word. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You. We thank You that wherever we are, You are there. And that You can speak to us and encourage us Father, would you help us to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying this very morning, that we would be encouraged, uplifted, we would be taught by the very Word of God to be matured into right thinking. Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers. Even in the most desperate moments, you hear our prayers. You lean into us and you act. What an amazing God you are that you hear the cries of our heart. Thank you for this word. Our hearts are ready, our ears are open to receive this text this morning. We ask all of this in Jesus' name and wherever you are, you can agree by simply saying, Amen. Amen. This morning I want us to look at a passage of scripture in the book of Psalms, chapter 116. Psalms 116. We are in a series right now on prayer, learning the different attributes of prayer and why it's important for us to pray and even how we should go about praying. It's a priority that we pray. It's proper that we pray daily and throughout the day. But I want to look at this morning this idea of praying with desperation in a desperate time. Does God hear our prayers when they're not formatted and thought through? When we haven't isolated a time to sit with Him and speak with Him? Does he hear that prayer that comes out of a sense of emergency or desperation? When we simply call out to him, does he hear that prayer and does he act? Let's look at this passage of scripture together out of Psalm 116 and let's see how the Lord acts when we pray with desperation. It begins in chapter 116, verse 1 and 2. It begins, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Let's look at this and break this apart together. It begins with, I love the Lord. What a wonderful way to begin our days. What a wonderful way to begin this psalm that we love God. But I want to show you that we only love God really because he first loved us. First John chapter 4 verse 19 says, we love because he first loved us. We know how to love because we see the love of God. God loved us before we even knew Him. 
and he showed mercy on us and he loved us. So our proper response today is to begin by saying that I love the Lord. But then the psalmist writes, because he has heard my voice. God does hear your voice when you speak to him, when you pour out your heart to him. Psalm 66 verse 19 says, but truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. He does hear you when you speak to him. He is with you always. So when you pour out your heart to him, when you isolate a time, this is a space for prayer. He meets you there and he hears your prayer. But I want to encourage you this morning that in those prayers of desperation, when you simply cry out to God, he hears you in those moments. When we don't have time to feel that we need to be elaborate, but we simply call out to God, he hears those prayers and is attentive to us. But notice how in verse two, he says, he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. We shouldn't get into a habit where we call out to God simply in a time of desperation. Only when we feel that we need him and we're overwhelmed by a situation or circumstance, and we, we call out to God. He does hear that prayer. But the psalmist says, because I know that I love God, and because he hears my voice, I want to talk to him. I pray to him every day. I call on him as long as I live. Let's make it a point today to not just turn to God in a time of desperation, not just turn to God when things are difficult, but to love God and to turn to Him every day. In the very first chapter of the book of Psalms, we see this verse, that His delight is in the law of the Lord and on His law He meditates day and night. God becomes a priority to us not just the lifeline that we run to when things are difficult, but he becomes like our breath. We cannot live without him. Back in Psalm 116, verse 3, we begin to see this idea of desperate prayers. Let's look at verse 3 and verse 4. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Shekol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. A desperate prayer in a desperate time. I want to encourage you that God hears Desperate prayers in desperate times. Psalm 31 verse 2 says, Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily, quickly. God, I need you right now. I want to share a short story with you on how God hears desperate prayers when there is no time to come up with proper verbiage no time to find eloquent verse to, to read to God as if to impress him, but simply calling out to God in desperation. And the story is very simple. A lady was driving her car, and as she came into her community, as the speed limit decreased as she entered the town, she realized that the accelerator on her car was stuck. And though she kept pressing on the brakes of her car, it wouldn't slow down, so she couldn't seem to put the car into neutral or, 
or get the car out of the gear that it was in and the ignition seemed stuck to her and the car began to go faster and faster. And as she came into the local downtown area, she realized she was gaining speed. She tried to turn on to a back road to get off of the main area where everyone was, but it, it was a rural road. Now we're around houses and children and the car continued to gain speed and gain speed and in pure anxiety and trying everything that she had, she called out as she accelerated towards the corner and simply yelled, Jesus. And for no reason at all, the car came to a stop and she pulls to the side of the road. A police officer came running up beside her. Apparently he had been following her for some time and knew that something was wrong. He said, are you okay? And with tears in her eyes, she said, I simply called out to God and the car came to a stop. I want to encourage you that God hears desperate prayers. When we simply call out to him, he hears us and he answers us quickly. On this weekend, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those that gave the ultimate sacrifice for the freedom of this great country. I want to encourage you that the prayers that were heard from the soldiers on the front lines of every battlefield were heard by God instantly, immediately. God inclined his ear to those men and women. My father used to say there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. When these men and women called out to their creator, I promise you, that God heard them. I want to show you in scripture out of Psalm 18, beginning in verse four, a soldier's prayer. The cords of death encompass me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Shekol entangled me and the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. When we could not be with the soldier on the battlefield, our great, amazing God was with them, even to usher them to their eternal home. God hears desperate prayers. Back in Psalm 116, in verse five and six, it says, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple when I was brought low, he saved me. When we remember these men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice, let us remember that God was with them. He heard their prayers. And that even though they had to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they shall fear no evil for you were with them. Your rod and your staff comforts them. And as some paid the ultimate sacrifice and gave up their life for our freedom, we serve a gracious God who would have ushered them home. God hears desperate prayers. When you desperately pray for the one that you love, God hears your prayer. 
When you desperately pray for your children, God hears your prayer. When you pray for your own health, God hears your prayers. He never told us to be elaborate in our prayer language. He said to be authentic. Not to use empty phrases, but to speak to Him, to pour out our heart to Him. And I want to encourage you on this Memorial Day that the prayers from battlefields were heard by an Almighty God. And the prayers that you pray in your home are heard by that same God. Back in Psalm 116, verse 7, the psalmist writes, Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For us, this means that we should not live in a state of anxiety. We shouldn't be living in a, in a constant place of worry and stress. But to return to rest for that is the dwelling place of the children of God. Returning to peace, this is the position of our soul. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. God's desire for you is that you be at peace. Don't worry and be anxious. We are not strong and courageous because of something that is in us that makes us strong. Or because the situation has encouraged us. We are strong and courageous because we know who fights with us and for us. It is not by might. It is not by power. It's by God's Spirit. That's how we move forward with confidence. Knowing that when we pray, the God of all heavenly hosts hears our prayer and He moves heaven and earth. When we call out to God in a sense of desperation, and all we can say is His name, He can stop the engine of the car and pull it safely to the side of the road. He can be with the soldier as he storms forward to fight for liberty. I also want to encourage you that as the psalmist writes, return, O my soul, to your rest. That for those men and women that did pay that ultimate sacrifice, that they did return to their Creator. They were not left alone, but God was with them in every moment. Psalm 23, verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The destination of all of us is to stand before God. What will we hear when we stand before God? Will you know him and will he know you? Will you have a relationship already with God before you stand before him? None of us know the time when we will stand before God. But it is our eternal destiny to meet him face to face. Will we return to rest and peace? I can help you in this moment by simply introducing you to Jesus. 
and helping you understand that it is not complicated on how we get to know Jesus, but it's recognizing who He is and what He's done, that He was sent to earth by His Father. He lived a flawless life for 33 years. He gave up His life because He loved you, and He paid for sin for all mankind once by dying on the cross, and we were the ones that put Him there. He could have stepped off the cross and gone back to His Father, but He remained there because He loves you. He adores you, and He paid for our debt once for all. Three days later, after His death on the cross, He rose from the dead, victorious over death, reminding us that we will be victorious over death and that death has no sting for us, for when we are absent from this body, we will become present with the Lord. Believe in this God. He loves you and adores you and knows your name. Simply talk to Him and ask Him to come into your heart. What better day than on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend to rededicate yourself to Jesus Himself because He loves you and He gave everything for you. Do we love Him? As we close this time together, I want to share one scripture with you. It's really known as the Memorial Day Scripture, for it reminds us that those who made that sacrifice for the freedom that we live in, Well, they paid an ultimate cost. It's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. And it reads, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. This is what every soldier did on every battlefield to fight for liberty, so that you can right now open the Word of God. You can hear these words and not hide in the shadows, but open the doors of your home and boldly say, I believe in Jesus Christ. You have the freedom to do that. But I want to show you a love somehow even greater by reminding you that God so loved the world that He sent His one and only Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is your decision. It is my decision. Let's Follow Jesus. Let's make this Memorial Day a day to remember those who paid the cost for freedom and to the greatest cost of our spiritual freedom. Jesus Christ loved you enough to pay that price as well. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you on this Memorial Day that you loved us so much that you paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Father, we thank you for the men and women who fought for this country and they paid the ultimate price 
so that we could have the freedom to stand and read the Word of God openly and unashamedly. But Father, we thank you that you are with those that did not return home to their families and that they were not alone and that you ushered them to their eternal rest. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you hear desperate prayers. You never said we had to be religious. In the sense of going through the motions, and that's when you would hear us. You never said we had to be elaborate, and that's when you would hear our voice. You never said we even had to be in a temple, and that in that place only would you hear us. But you said that even in our homes, we could pray and you would hear us. You said that we don't need to heap up empty phrases, but just speak from our heart and you would hear us. That we can simply call out your name and know that you are here with us. You are an amazing God that would hear the desperate prayers of your saints. So we take this encouragement and we go back to where we started and we will be strong and very courageous. Not in our own strength will we confide. But we will know that you are truly on our side. And because you are with us, we fear no evil. We will be wise, but we will not walk in fear. Father, on this Memorial Day, would you be with all of the families that have lost their loved ones in the fight for liberty and freedom? Would you comfort them, surround them, remind them that there is hope, You are an amazing God that can bring strength and comfort, calm and security. As we close this time together, on this day set apart, this weekend set apart to remember those who gave their life in the fight for this country. Let us pray together the prayer that those young men and women prayed. And we now pray together. Pass down from generation to generation. A prayer that was prayed before entering battlefields and a prayer that was prayed in the return back to camp. We now, in this moment, agree together. All the saints of God, united by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you all. Happy Memorial Day weekend until we meet again.